Blessed be the name of the Lord. Well, everybody's very excited. Very well. We greet everyone, the peace of the Lord. I invite the church to stand up. Let's open our Bibles in Genesis. Genesis 22. Genesis 22 from verse 1. Genesis 22 from verse 1. Amen. Thus says the word of the Lord. Now it came to pass after these things that God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham. And he said, Here I am. Then he said, Take now your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. So Abram rose early in the morning and saddled his donkey and took two of his young men with him and Isaac, his son. And he split the wood for the burnt offering and arose and went to the place of which God had told him. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said to his young man, Stay here with the donkey. The lad and I will go uh, yonder and worship, and we will come back to you. So Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on Isaac, his son. And he took the fire in his hand and a knife, and the two of them went together. But Isaac spoke to Abraham, his father, and said, My father. And he said, Here I am, my son. Then he said, Look, the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? And Abraham said, My son, God will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering. So the two of them went together. Amen. The church may be seated. My brethren, we are today closing the month of the children, intermediary and adolescents. And it's with great joy that in this morning we had the promotion of the classes the children that waited for so, so long with great anxiety they wanted to go to the front uh, many of them uh, were promoted I saw the crowd and now the kids are now seated on their right place for the first time a few adolescents a few intermediary and this for us as a church is a great victory to see our children in the presence of the Lord. And the word here shows a moment that is similar to our walk with the Lord. The word that we read speaks of the experience and of the experience that a servant of God went through. Abraham, we all know Abraham was a well-known man as the father of faith, a man that has been uh, was used by the Lord. And the text begin in this way. Now it came to pass after these things. Now I ask to the brethren, what things? Which things? What happened in the life of Abraham? up to this point. Have the brethren stopped to think what Abram had to go through in order to come to the point where he was? Abraham this, doesn't have this name. 
Abraham is not who he is. Abraham is not remembered in the way that he is remembered in a, in a reckless way. The life of Abraham has a history. Abraham has a baggage. Abraham has an accumulation of experiences that were lived in the presence of God. And those are not experiences that are small experiences. Those are deep experiences. Those are uh, landmark experiences. Those are promises that God made to Abraham. Those are conversations, prayers that Abraham made to, to God. And those are actions. There were um, stands that he made and choices that he made that led Abraham to have a history that to this day the evangelical world takes pleasure and has pride in speaking about Abraham. And all of us, we have our own histories, all of us. The salvation of man is a story that can be told. Your salvation in Jesus is a story that is, it's being every day it's being designed. And this story with us, of our salvation with God, depends a lot on what we do. And what you do from this day forward. Because if you choose the wrong thing, your story, which I could say um, a road upward, and at this point here, Abraham, he begins to go up. The Lord called him in order for him to go to the Mount Moriah together with his son. To sacrifice as a burnt offering his son. Make a sacrifice to his son, an offering to God. And our life, our spiritual life, is like a story that is being written. We are the ones who, who can many times change the direction and of, our, of our actions in this story. God, as always, is the one who is sovereign of our, above all things. God observes. God gives us advices. God shows us the way. God allows the trials to come. God authorizes many times things to happen in our lives in order for us to be tested by God. That was exactly what happened in the life of Abraham. And it happened that after those things that, and that Abraham tested God and, his, and God tested Abraham. Abraham answered, here I am. And our answer should always be this. Here I am. God, how can I help? God, I, I'm, I'm your disposal, Lord. You can count on me. <coughs> the story of Abraham is a story of blessings from the beginning. Let's remind a little bit. I'm not going to tell the whole story. From his call to possess a, a land, God promised that he was going to be the father of, of a nation. God promised that upon him a new nation would be born that was going to be blessed by God and all the families were going to be blessed by God. Abraham saw the operation of God on, on his behalf. God gave many deliverances to Abraham. God had compassion on Abraham. God caused that everything that Abraham did and everything that Abraham did in the name of the Lord, God would honor him. God spared the family of Lot because Abraham prayed to the Lord. 
God gave deliverance to Abraham in wars against kings. God also promised Abraham that he was going to have a son. His wife was sterile, could not have a child. But then, after being very old, God promised his, uh, fulfilled his promise. And the story of Abraham is a story that is very touching. And after all of the things that Abraham went through, being faithful to the Lord and seeing the miracles of God, now God tells Abraham, now you take your son. And God says, your only son, the one whom you love, and go to the Moria land and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. My brethren, our lives are like this. The Lord give us a responsibility. And many times we are writing our own stories on the Lord. Tomorrow you may look back. Tomorrow you may see what God is doing in your life. Today, we have been the target of prayers of many. The Lord told Abraham, you're going to be the father of a great nation. From you, the nations are going to be blessed. How many families are here are being blessed because of this promise from God? But God, He wants us to relay our own experiences to our children. The, the, the departure of Abraham and experience of Abraham in this text was because God wanted him to pass on to his son everything that Abraham went through with the Lord. God, Abraham knew that the descendants of Isaac and the promise that God had given to Abraham, they were going to be fulfilled if the generation of Abraham was a generation that was faithful to God. And today, we are here. How many generations have gone through to arrive to our days? We can say that man, he remember, remember his own generations. You for, for sure remember your your grandfather, your great grandfather, or but your great grandfather, it's hard for you, for people to have a, a contact. A great a grandfather is already difficult. A great grandfather is already difficult. But our God, you know, He lives from eternity to eternity. If today we are living the salvation in Jesus, it's because our God is eternal and he lives from eternity to eternity. And for God, there's no time. For God, there is no beginning or end because he's eternal. He's everything. He's above everyone. And God never forgets about us. And you're going to say, Abraham, I'm going to, you need to take your son and remember, and my brethren, the responsibility of sharing our experience with God to our children is ours. It is yours. If you have a son today in the presence of the Lord that is here in this church, you have a responsibility, a commitment with God to share with him or her what you have gone through to this point. And God says, take your son to the Mount Moriah. And my brethren, you might think, think one thing. Oh, God, what a request. This is a request that will lead to death. Well, it's not going to lead to death. It was a request from God in order for a mindset, in order for an experience of life or a way of life may be shared to his son Isaac. The word might even say to you, hey, look, this thing about church, you're killing your son or daughter. You're stripping all freedom from your child. You 
you're preventing them from having uh, enjoying their youth or their childhood. You're killing your child, but it is not going to lead to death. If we are here, if we are hi arrived here, it is because here there are many Isaacs. Children that were born in a Christian home, children that had experiences, children that lived like Isaac, they grew up hearing the voice of God. You can imagine Isaac having a father as Abraham, who, that a man who spoke with God in such a way, having with Abraham, a man with so much experience, a man that spoke to God and God would answer, a man who asked, whenever he asked something to God, God answered. But Isaac could not only live from the experience that his father had, he had to start his own history. And this moment here is a moment of definition in the life of Isaac. So after those things, we all have after those things. If you have a son, it's because the moment when when those one now it came to pass, then you're going to have an experience with God, with your son or daughter. And this is our responsibility. And if you are here, it's because the secret, it works. This receipt works. Nobody died. Nobody died because he came to the church. Nobody died because they sang songs in church or because he saw their or the, his father or a mother in the presence of the Lord. No. This trip going to the mount is not going to lead to death, but it's going to lead to life. It's, it's, for, it's going to be for deliverance. It's so that Isaac would be prepared to give continuity to the promise of God in the life of his father. Because Isaac needed to have this character built. He needed to be prepared. And the text continues. Then he said, So then he went up at early dawn and, and saddled his donkey and took two of his men and Isaac and, and split the wood for the burnt offering and arose and went to the place of which God had told him. My brother, early dawn, God spoke to him, and early in the morning, in the early dawn, in the beginning of the day, as soon as the sun came up, Abraham was already there preparing things. And there are moments in our lives in which God calls us for something. When God awakes us for something, there are moments in our lives in which God speaks to us and He requires something from our lives. And we need to do this in, in a hurry. We cannot delay. Oh, I'm going to say this tomorrow. I'm going to do this tomorrow. I'm going to answer the Lord tomorrow. No. When God says, Abraham, take a, take a son. And in the early in the morning, he was already willing to answer the request of the Lord. And Isaac was there, already awakened. Isaac was already seeing the actions of his father. Isaac witnessed everything. And my brethren, our children, you may even think that they are not paying attention, but they are seeing everything that we are doing. They see everything. They observe everything. They hear. They listen. They want to do uh, the same, exactly the same. They want to imitate us. That's how children are. And Isaac, when he saw his father early in the morning, answering and giving heed to, heed to the voice of God, and that's what our, what our children want to see from us. They need to see a willingness to answer God's requests. They want to see a definition in our lives. They want to copy what is good for our growth and for their own growth. That's why Isaac was there awake, awake in the morning. That's why Isaac was there getting ready to go up. He didn't know what was happening. Abraham knew. Abraham could have thought, about many things. Look, I'm not going to do this today. I'm going to do this tomorrow. Maybe, maybe next week. May God, God may forget about this. Maybe in five days, a month, God will want something else. He will forget. No. He was already there, willing to answer the request of the Lord. And that's what God wants from us. Willingness. 
readiness to put in practice in our lives the will of God. And many times we feel sorry, oh, poor child, so many things. This thing of going to church and praying, reading the Word, there's so many things to our children. They're so, they're so young, it's too soon for them. Maybe later they will learn. No. No, they, they need to learn from us. They need to begin to seek the Lord early, soon. Teach a child to consult the Bible. Teach a child to seek the Lord in prayer. And he picks up the donkey. And the two men, and he begins to go up. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said to his young man, Stay here with the donkey and, uh, and the lad, and I will go yonder and worship, and we will come back to you. Well, he came to the mount, near the Mount Moriah, and he told the slaves, You stay here, the donkey can stay, but now only Isaac and I are going to go, no one else. We are going to go up alone. You can stay here. There are moments in our lives, moments in the life of our children, they need to understand one thing, that in order to go up in the mount, in order to have experiences with God, they need to be free. The slaves can no longer go up in the mount. And those who are still slaves to the world, the addictions, to the drugs, the ones who are still slaves to the prince of this world, the ones who are linked to the things of this life, those who are not free and delivered by the power of the blood of Jesus, cannot go up in the mount. And they, ca they cannot go up to the mount. Only the ones who are free. This is an experience that Isaac was going through. Uh, Abraham was teaching Isaac. He wanted to say to Isaac, now you're going to go up together alone. Only you and I. Behind are going to be the slaves. The animal is going to be left behind. But now we're going to go up and go look only forward. Because if you only look forward, you see the deliverance from God. If you only look forward, you see only the Lord. If you look behind, you remember the life that we had. You can no longer, Isaac, look to slavery or think about slavery, think about the world. But we need now to look only towards the heights, only towards the target. We need to look towards the Lord. And there are moments in which we need to say this to our children. Leave the world behind. Leave the things of the world behind. Today we are not you are a new creature. You are a new life in Jesus. Today we have been you are chosen of God. Today you can only you need only to look to God, to no one else. And now he says pick up the the wood and put upon Isaac and he took the fire and, and the knife and then and the, he takes the fire and the knife and put the wood on, on the shoulders of Isaac and Isaac picked up the wood and he had collected for the burnt offering to build the altar to start to build the fire he puts upon, puts upon Isaac and they begin to go up and now I ask the brethren Wood is not a tree or a plant, right or wrong. Kindle uh, is what? And a piece of wood. You don't pick up today a piece of wood and try to plant it. It's not going to grow anymore. What is a piece of wood? The worth of a piece of wood? No one do, does anything with a piece of wood. Only one thing. What do you do with a piece of wood? You put it on a fire to produce coal. Because when the wood is mixed with fire, it, it turns into a live coal. And now you can produce food and cook food and warm up the environment. And the wood is, has this own, uh, that's its purpose. The only worth of the, the wood is when it's live coal. 
Now Isaac had to carry the wood. No one else could carry the wood. You know why? Because our children, they need to have experiences with the wood. They need to have experience with the Holy Spirit. They need to be led to have a, a contact with the Holy Spirit, with this fire, which is the Holy Spirit, in order to burn their impurities and cause them to be live coals kindled in the presence of the, of the Lord and so that they have they have a spiritual life and that they may become lives that have been controlled by the Holy Spirit and they become children, guided, conducted by the Holy Spirit. And they are the ones who have to carry the wood. Maybe if it was me, I would have put the wood on the donkey. Why not bring in the donkey? Putting the wood on, on the back of the child, what a call to action. <laughs> if the slave that the donkey would, would carry the wood, no. But it is all prophetic. There is always a reason for it. And the reason is exactly this. Isaac needed to have a contact with the Lord. He needed to have a, his own experience. And our children also need to have an experience their experience with God. They need to seek the Lord. And many times we feel uh, like sorry for our children. Oh, I'm going to carry the wood for him. But that's not enough. There will come a, uh, they will come into an age which if they have not had throughout years, the years, having had an experience of knowing the Lord and praying to the Lord, they need to carry the wood. It is your son or our daughter, and they are our children. They need to carry the wood. The responsibility of, of doing this is in them now. They want to play in the church, right? Yes. But they need to carry the wood. They want to grow, they want to be ushers, they want to be teachers, they want to be deacons, right? Yes, but need to carry the wood. They need to be burnt, taken over by the Holy Spirit. They need to be surrounded by the Holy Spirit. They need to be baptized by the Holy Spirit, you know, to testify and to have uh, the desire to speak about the Lord. They need to leave this. We cannot take the wood from our children. We cannot allow them to have experiences with the Lord, of seeking the Lord. And how are you going to do this? You're going to instruct them. Daddy, can I do this? Can I go to this place, such and such place? And I said, no, I don't know. If I were you, I will consult the Lord. Go go to your bedroom, enter your bedroom, kneel down and consult the Lord and see what God is going to tell. God is going to be give a, a huge no. Trust in the Lord. You will see a no that is going to be even, even go upset out of that. It's going to relieve the pressure from the parents. Yeah, put the blame on the Lord. And God yields. He, God takes care of us. Let's live by faith. After all, doesn't God speak on the word? So let us let us choose to leave this and understand this. Don't remove the word from the shoulders of your child. If they want something, let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray for the Lord to allow them to purchase something. Lead our children to have experience with the Lord. They need to earn this, like Abraham and his history. It has to be written with them and God. What we can do is to bring in them. Let us go up in the mountain. Us together, let us seek together the Lord. I'll show you the way, Isaac. And the path here, leave the slavery behind, leave the world behind. Now we're going to free Jesus. We're going to go up in the mountain, us together. Don't remove the wood from the shoulders of your child. Sometimes it's difficult. You feel out they stay two or three o'clock in the morning on the internet, on cell phone, under the bed. The, the, the bed sheets, they're, they're trying to trick us, but they don't trick us. And two o'clock in the morning, they they are on the south. When at ten o'clock in the morning, they can't go to the the church. On Sunday school, they can't. Oh, let us bring them to to next Sunday. And uh, you're removing the the wood from the shoulder of your, your child. Early dawn, prayer, Bible school. It doesn't kill anyone. Otherwise, we would be all dead. 
will not be here. The promise of God is being fulfilled. When I say this here, you may say, oh, I don't have somebody, you have a, a cousin. Yes, and you can help your cousin. You need your cousin to have, your, a nephew to have an experience of God. And a clap brought his whole family to the Lord. Now he's taking care of his grandchildren. That's our role. He even had great grandchildren. And he's going to stay a hundred more years here. <laughs> he didn't great grandchildren in presenting the great grandchildren by faith. But that's how it is the Word of God needs to be fulfilled in our lives. And from generation to generation, we have a responsibility. I don't have a child today, but you have a relative. You have a nephew or a niece, somebody that is close to you that need to hear from the Lord. Do not remove the wood from the shoulders of your child. And Isaac now comes to the top, to the top and he says, Father, I see, I see the, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? A children, child usually ask questions. You may think that they are a fools, but they are not. Our children, they are gonna, they're gonna ask questions, and that question they're going to ask have to have answers. When he said, "Father," when he asked, "My father," and Abra what? A Abraham answered, Here I am, my son. In the same way that he spoke to God, he spoke to his son, you have the same uh, willingness to answer the Lord, but also to take care of the family and children. Uh, many want to take care of the Lord, but they forget about the family. We cannot do this. Hear him, Lord, and hear him to the family. Isaac came to ask a question to Abraham. Where's the lamb? I see everything here. But what is the lamb? If we don't have an answer to our children, if we do not learn about the word, if we don't have experiences that might lead them to understand and open up their mind, if we don't have this to show to our children, you know what is going to happen? It's going to show the world. The world will answer. Because you're going to seek at home, you don't have biblical structure, we don't know the doctrine, we don't know anything from the Lord. They're going to lose interest for the things of the Lord and going to start asking questions out there in the world. You know, out there, what, who is going to answer is the, the criminal and is the sex abuser who is in the schools. The world is prepared to take, call, take over the tasks that we are now ignoring. The world is completely involved and prepared for this. The world is willing to take control of your family and children. That's why we need to have our story with the Lord. That's why we need to begin a new story with the Lord. If you're not well with the Lord, do this. Tonight, the Lord is calling you. After those things, you're going to take your son to the Mount Moria. And the Lord wants you to understand this because in the Mount Moria is the provision of the Lord. In the Mount Moria is the resource for our salvation. In the Mount Moria is where Isaac saw that he needed to be the victim, but God provided. God didn't sacrifice anyone because Jesus took our place. Jesus is the one who is, he is the Lamb of God, who takes the sin from the world. Jesus is there. Jesus is the answer to all things. Jesus is the solution. When Isaac asked, he asked it for me. God will provide Isaac. And truly, God provided him. God truly opened up the doors, and the Lamb was there, and Isaac was spared. Because that's what God does. And that's what God wants to do with our children. God wants to lead them to have an experience so that they may truly know who is the Lamb of God that takes the sin away from the world. And tonight, the Lord is calling us to have an experience, um, a landmark in our lives. The Lord is calling you to be here guiding our children to go up the Mount Moriah so that they may be able to see the provision from the part of the Lord, 
and that they may see the resource that God has for us and the solution to everything is to believe in the Lord to open up the, your heart and allow Jesus to leave so let us hear a song alguns dons que o Senhor deu e depois nós vamos orar pelas, pelos, pelos promovidos amém? vamos colocar de pé irmãos o Senhor mostrava um coração de um jovem que está vivendo um momento que está indo por momentos afastados do Senhor que estão indo para o Senhor e não está funcionando o coração The heart that is away from the Lord, a heart that is running a serious risk of stopping to work, stop to function, you know the word, is death. But the Lord tonight, during the service here, during the period of praises, the Lord has operated a miracle. God replaced his heart. God during the service in an operation of a miracle. God gave to this youth a new opportunity, a new understanding. And God is now going to go through the Mount Moriah. Now this young man is going to go with the parents all the way to the top of this Mount Moriah and learn what will help him to have an experience with God. God also shown a man yeah, is very much willing to do a project, but He had many difficulties, and he would get hurt without understanding what was going on. I'm reading the gift literally, and then I'm going to give the interpretation. And I saw that he asked requests from the engineer of this work that he was doing, that answered him saying that the problem is with the, the tools that were not appropriate. So then it was provided quickly, prop, a prop, appropriate tools and was taught the proper way of using those tools and I saw that that man began to work and develop his work with any any danger or any accident and that's exactly what it is what God wants to speak to us here salvation is a work we live in a work that God is building in us a history God is giving us the understanding regarding salvation. But if we do not use the means of grace, the spiritual weapons, spiritual, uh, spiritual tools, if we use the tools that are linked, to non, uh, are linked to this life, we are going to get harmed. Because the only way for a man to reach salvation is through Jesus. There's no other way. You can be a good father, you can be an excellent father, an excellent employee. It is worthless. Good work. 
good works that does not lead me to heaven. It leads me to be a good citizen or to be a good person, which is wonderful. But when we speak about eternity, salvation, you need to understand that the work that you need to enter into is the work of the Holy Spirit. And use the means of grace as resources of grace. Because you need to spend, you need to pay for anything. You just need to answer the voice of God. And also there is a woman that is going through a um, great moment of anguish. And she doesn't know the reason for this anguish. But, but because apparently everything is well in her life. She has resources. She is not lacking anything. But she has an anguish that she does not understand. But you know the reason for this anguish? is the anguish of the soul. This anguish is of the soul that cannot be filled with anything from this world. Only with the Word of God. Only with salvation in Jesus. That you will have peace. The peace that we sang here, the peace that you're looking for, the relief that you need, it's only in Jesus. There's one else. There's another one. A youth, another youth of uh, a young man. He's walking circles. And there was a string that, that made a circle around him. For sure, there are limits there are around him that he cannot go beyond this, those limits and keep, he keeps walking in circles. And he was not able to see the possibilities that were out there. Because he was surrounded there. And there is a, a gold pen. He needed to sign a contract. Who gave the spiritual gift? Thiago, say the, the gift. The microphone, please. A young man that was walking in a vicious cycle. He could not see the possibilities that were outside of what he saw. I saw that when he began to to uh, see outside of the circle that he had, that where he was, he saw a gold pen that signed a contract for admission. He needed an open door but we cannot see what was around him. We can only see what was only close to him. Israel walked for many years going around the mount. But there came a moment when, when God told them, turn to the north. And God is giving you a solution to the, your problem. Go to the north. Go up the mount. And you see how many possibilities for a professional life. You're a young man for a professional life, for a sentimental life, for your future. God has many blessings for you. And God wants to honor you. But you need, at this moment, you need to look only to the Lord. Don't keep walking without any progress and wasting time. There's no life outside from Jesus. You are probably inside of a, a Christian family. I understand this, that you already know the Lord, but you're having a struggle within yourself. You need to have an experience, your own experience with God. And we'll see how God will honor your plans and your projects. Amen. Glory to Jesus. We're going to have a word of glorification to the Lord. Lord, we praise Him. Because we are in the house of the king. Because you have taken care of us. Because many came to the mount to hear the glory of the Lord. That's where you quench the thirst of our soul and bring joy to our lives. We praise the Lord because one day you called us. You delivered us from the slavery of this world. Gave us a new experience. What thankful for the youth, for the adolescents, they are still going to be used with might by your hands because they are being instructed on the path of the Lord. Because this work, your work, the work of the Holy Spirit has progressed in this place. 
We praise you for your great love. Because you are the shepherd of this vineyard. We praise your holy name. Amen. Amen. Very well, Reverend. I'd like to ask you to sit down so, we, so then we could call the ones that were being promoted so that everyone would see them. It's a joy for all of us. We bring here to the front Daniel Brito and Brian, who's not here. None of them is here. Isabella de Mello. Yes, you can't come, Isabel. You want to look backwards? You're going to call also Lucas and Henrique? Kathleen de Mello. She's not alone anymore. Ashley Mello. And Rachel Polinario. She's not here. It, would you want to look behind everyone? No? At oh, the last center of the last center is uh, um, something else. Let us all stand up. Glory to God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Let's just glorify the name of the Lord for this victory. For this step that they are taking. Let's sing a song.
we're going to have uh, a woman, sister, glorifying the Lord for the victory of our brethren, the, for their conquest. One of the women can pray. We praise the Lord. The whole church rejoices. Blessed your name because we can see your children, the intermediary, and adolescents and the youth keeping your word. Stay in your path. We praise your name, Lord. Because it's very good to know that they serve this God, that this God that, who is alive. Thanks for our victories, Lord. Thank you for everything that you have done for, for them. Because you have sustained them, them to this day for being with them. We praise your name. We want to say that we are happy. We love the Lord because of this care that your church feels for the children to murder in the last sense. We praise you for you in the name of Jesus. Our desire as a church is that your story may be like the story of Abraham so that you may be children of God, friends of God. Abraham was considered as a friend of God. My hope is that you have the same experience. Amen. Or to God. You can go back. Let's pray, bringing this service to a close. Or to Jesus. We praise your name, Lord, because you are here in this place. We want to glorify your name because we know, Lord, that your gra grace has been enough. We glorify because the Lamb of God paid a high price for our lives. And today, if we are here, it is because we are thankful to you. If we are coming back to your presence every day, it is because we are thankful to you, Lord. Because your word leads us to have to fear the Lord. And that's why, Lord, tonight, we ask to you that you may receive our glorification, our praise as uh, our offering, Lord. That's what we have to give you, Lord, our gratitude. Take us home in peace so that we may have a week of victories in your presence. We pray in the name of Jesus. In your name we say the wonderful grace of our Lord and Lord, Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, our eternal Father, the sweet and tender consolation and the gifts of the Holy Spirit be poured out upon all of us now and forevermore. Amen. The church may sit down. If anyone wants a prayer, we are here at your disposal. Amen. On Tuesday, we have a service here. We are, you are all invited for us to be together at 8 o'clock and 12 peace to the Lord.